Barking again. At 805. Making it work. Making it work. Let's give a few minutes for people to pop on. Good evening. There we go. We are good. Are we roll. rolling? We are. Yay. At 805. I will share this also real fast here. So, super excited, you guys. We're getting back on track doing our Tuesday night lives. So we're really, really excited. This is stuff like I've definitely been getting asked all week um, leading into the holiday and kind of with New Year's on the horizon. So we're really excited to, to share these tips with you guys um, tonight. There are things that we think are super valuable and we hope that they help you in whatever area you may be a little bit stuck in moving forward. So the lighting looks a little different. As you can see, yes. we're in our kitchen right now. Um, so that might look a little different, but uh, right. we've got a different so backdrop. So let's do that later because it's not working. Mm -hmm. I'll do it. It's just <laughs> not All right. So if you are joining us, please let us know where yes. you're joining us from. Let us know where you're coming to us from. Mm -hmm. um, Drop us a comment if you also have some tips that you want to share with others. Um, the biggest thing that we've been chatting and hearing about is people don't want to get off track as they hit the holidays um, and they're looking for simplicity. So just want to continue to get. There you go. Thank you. Um, they are wanting to stay on track to be able to make this investment in their health um, and make it as easy you know as possible uh, especially when this time of year tends to be busier like yeah. you've got more on the schedule you have all kinds of holiday stuff added into like the regular mix and if you have traditions and extra stuff you're throwing in it can get a little <laughs> squirrely pretty quickly so yeah so uh Dr. Jacqueline and I were talking this morning about what we do as a family uh, to try and stay healthy. And um, we just started jotting down a list that we have here. And um, one of the common themes that came up was, you know, usually about this time, uh, we might be about a week early, but around this time every year, you start to hear the typical, you know, health BS uh <laughs> that I'll call it, you know, the, the new year, new you, the, you know, yes. you start getting, you I'm know, going to do a cleanse in January. Yeah, I got to lose 10 pounds. Um, and so, you know, that stuff's all fine and dandy, but um, in our opinion, that's most of those things. If you generalize them are not the things that uh, keep you on track that keep you healthy. So yeah, um, we have quite a big list I think we can get yes. through all of it in an hour. We should be able um, to. But yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna just kind of go through our list, um, and they're generally ranked pretty well. Uh, we kind of started. Uh, we have fifteen items that we wanted to talk about tonight. Fifteen tips. So um, let's just jump into it and start cool. with number fifteen. Number fifteen. I'm gonna let you have this one. Trust the process. Mm. So especially this time of year, this is something I've heard already from my patients going through Thanksgiving. You know, they're like, I passed on the stuffing. I stuck to my food allergies, but the scale is not moving. Yeah. Guys, your body's not Amazon Prime. It's going to take some time to yeah. heal. Trust that you're making this investment. You're making these choices and you will gain the benefits and then some but it's going to take some time. And uh, for those that are joining us, I will say, I think we do have some things on this list that you probably have not heard of before. That's true. We tried to come up with new things. And it's, and it's not just surrounded around the holidays. It's more so these are things that we do daily. We do yeah. weekly. Um, just kind of hacks, like easy things again, to keep you on track um, that are easy to just put into your daily life that will really help you guys moving forward. Okay. So trust the process, mm -hmm. getting healthy. And then I wrote down getting sick because mm -hmm. 
at some point in the past two weeks, at least one of our family members or more have not felt 100%. Correct. And why is getting sick a part of the process? Your body needs to get sick. That is how you build your immune system. So think of small kids. Think of when kids go back to school. Everything starts flying. Every, everybody starts getting sick. Um, you need to do that. You need to get a fever. You need your white blood cells to start to produce antibodies. This is how you strengthen and sharpen your immune system. And if it doesn't encounter and respond, your immune system is going to be weak and it's going to be sluggish. And think about like not going to the gym. Your immune system needs that workout so to speak. It's healthy for it to respond. I think one of the most annoying things, <clears throat> excuse me, that when I have a conversation with somebody and they're like, oh, you you run a wellness clinic. Why are you sick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like to me, that just tells me that they don't understand the body. Yeah. And I find it annoying, not in the sense that the person's annoying, but that they were never taught how what being healthy is with the process. Yeah. So. Your immune system, the response it gives when it encounters something that is foreign, that, you know, and, and most adults too, you run yourself down. Yeah. Most of the time, if you've built your immune system properly as a child, you've gone through the fevers, you've gone through all the things. When you get sick as an adult, it's typically your own fault. Yeah. You haven't slept well, you haven't taken care of yourself. And so again, but if that happens, it's a it's a normal physiological response, and it's a good thing. Your immune system is activating; it's supposed to do that. All right. So, so moving on to number mm -hmm. fourteen, I think number fourteen. Go ahead, and you can have that one too. Body products. So <clears throat> this is some stuff we've covered at different points, um, especially. It's, I just heard it today in the office. It's frustrating. I understand. You read a product, you thought this lotion worked, you thought it was pure, and then they changed their formulation and you're like, now I can't use it. So you want good, clean products. Anything that touches your skin is in your blood system, in your circulation in 30 to 45 seconds. Well, we just went through that during the summer. It wasn't our sunscreen that we used to use, didn't the formulation change? Yes. He always laughs at me, but like sunscreen's a big one where they definitely change it year to year. And so I am like a crazy person every summer and researching. So ewg.org, it's environmentalworkinggroup.org. They have on their website different products, different product guides, different listings of ingredients. The other thing, but not everything is on there, is Think Dirty. It's an yep. app on your smartphone. So, again, I always tell patients, Google it. See what it's made from or duck, duck, go it. Um, see, you know, because they use these fancy scientific names. I don't know why. They won't say coconut oil. It will say other things. And so understand what the ingredient is and then understand if it's clean or not. Like, is it something healthy that your body knows what to do with? And this, this goes for the dudes too. Like I am very particular with the products that I put in my beard. Um, you know, it's, it's the same thing for the guys. And, you know, when we talk with people um, all the time, you know, they're like, Oh, I'm healthy, but they're still brushing their teeth with Crest or Colgate. Yes. With fluoride. Like, yeah. Like that's, you know, that's one of those things that a lot of times that just refreshes people's memory on, oh, yeah, I've, I've looked at all my food. I've looked at my, my beauty products, but I haven't looked at my toothpaste. Or your deodorant. Yeah. That's one that gets a lot of people, too. You do not want an antiperspirant. You do not want something that has aluminum in it. Definitely not. Um Again, that's a heavy metal. You do not want to be putting that on topically on a daily basis. Right. You would not be licking lead paint off your walls. That's a heavy metal. You should definitely not be applying it in your underarm. Yeah. Not safe. So that's a big category. Tackle that one. 
and keep tackling it. The reason why I brought that up and put it on the list is because I literally just had that conversation today. A gal loved this body lotion and they totally changed the formulation and she was super frustrated. And I said, unfortunately, it happens a lot. Yeah. You just got to keep checking stuff as you buy it. All right. Number 13. <clears throat> Number 13. So uh, supplements on hand. So we all know that, um, you know, supplements are important. Supplements are you know, probably one of the most important things it's lower on the list because we're talking specifically about immune support. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are, you know, several supplements that we keep in our house that we maybe only use once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. um, but it's having those on hand for when you do need them uh, to support your immune system. Yeah. So a big one this time of year, you should definitely, unless you live in like lower Florida, be supplementing with vitamin D3. So D3 with K2, that's how our uh, vitamin D is formulated. The reason why you want it like that is because it absorbs much more readily when it is uh, created that way. That's why ours is the way that it is. Um, and again, unless you're in lower Florida, like <coughs> your Sorry. sun strength is no longer strong enough. You have to supplement throughout the winter. And then what would be better is if you know your levels, so you could supplement accordingly. Uh, what are some other supplements that are good to have for yes. when you start, you know, expressing health as you put it? <laughs> so when your immune system kicks in, one of the best things to have is, is high vitamin C items. Now, this can be done a lot of ways. Yep. Uh, it doesn't have to be a supplement. I will go to the store and buy whatever looks and smells the freshest. So whether that's grapefruit. Uh, oranges, so a high citrus item, you know, fresh uh, lemons are high in C. You could, you definitely do not want juice. Again, you want the fruit in its natural state with the um, actual fiber within it. So you don't get too much sugar. Um, you could do Camu Camu. That is a supplement uh, powder. So this is a plant that grows like in South America that's really high in vitamin C. Um, I don't mind the emergencies or some of those like things out there. It's just, I would rather get it from the natural source yeah. as close as you can get. Um, so C is fantastic. Zinc. Zinc yeah, is also good. fantastic. Again, there's a lot of ways that you can do it. There's, um, you know, rice. Uh, sorry, my brain is starting to slow down. Uh, there is rice sweetened so with rice sugars uh brown rice sugars uh sweetened cough drops they're all natural it's called the brand that we like is zand z-a-n-d um so that is one that's good that has zinc and a couple other things like elderberry in it so when you have a sore throat because there's a lot of respiratory stuff flying around this year that is a good option all right, so it says, Ida. I've, heard, I've heard it's very often that we shouldn't take vitamin D, that it's a hormone. Is there any truth behind that? So as vitamin D converts, it does turn into a hormone. The really important thing is your body needs it to run through a lot of immune system processes. So I always describe it as a reservoir. So think about like a reservoir, a man-made lake. You want a really big pool if your immune system has to activate readily. And a lot of people throughout the winter think about what happens, especially here in Colorado, like all our reservoirs, the water starts to go down and down and down. And then if it's already down and your immune system needs to pull, like you're, you're out, like you're very low. So it does turn into a hormone, but again, it activates and then it helps synchronize, which is what hormones do. They're messengers, and it helps to synchronize a lot of immune system reactions. But you need the subcomponents, which create the vitamin D. So that's why supplementing it and getting skin exposure is great in the summer, but you're not going to be able to do that in the winter. Is that part of the reason why we carry K2 in ours? Yes, that's also one of the reasons why, because it helps, again, create all those what's called constituents that you need to make that chemical reaction happen with the biochemistry of it. Yeah. So yes, you definitely want to get it naturally in the summer. That means sun exposure, um, not at the peak times of day when sun is the strongest, but you're not going to be able to get enough of it in the winter. But typically it's not going to be harmful 
No. Even in high doses. It, it gets harmful, like, when you, and that's why you do want to check your blood and actually test this. So in really high amounts, it can be bad. Um, and it can start to be toxic because it's what's called fat soluble. So you can't just pee out when you have extra, but it's pretty difficult unless you're supplementing with crazy high levels for a really long period of time to go to that point, like where it becomes toxic. Well, foods are rich in vitamin D. There's not many. That's the hard part. So, um, certain mushrooms are, um, things like reishi, uh, shaga, lion's mane, um, oysters, some fishes, and I don't know exactly which ones off the top of my head. I think it's some of the littler fishes, like sardines. But part of the problem is in order to receive the adequate amounts, you need to eat a lot of that, right? Correct. Yeah, it is much easier to just go ahead. Normally, again, <laughs> yes, I'm a big fan of getting it through food. Vitamin D is extremely difficult to do in food. Yes, I a cod liver oil would have some. Um, and a lot of cod liver oils, similar to uh, other fish oil products out there, combine it together, but it's actually added. So you want to make sure it's D3, that that's the form that they're adding to it. Because most of the time in something like that, it's not just the naturally occurring amounts. And they probably they probably put it with something like cod liver or omegas because mm-hmm. those are fats. Yeah, right? and so it actually makes it more absorbable, yeah. which is a good thing too. Um, the last immune system support that I super encourage everybody to have on hand is colloidal silver. That stuff is amazing. That kills everything. So that's kind of our medicine cabinet go-to. It kills viruses, bacteria, yeast, all the things. So that's a great one to have on hand for lots of reasons. Um, and then if sore throats are a thing, are the elderberry. The elderberry is lovely for sore throats. Xylitol. xylitol. Yep, xylitol. Yep. Yes. Birch-based xylitol. Birch-based xylitol. That's another great one for sore throat. So a little quick tip. That's kind of our supplement stash of things that are kind of our go-tos when we're not feeling 100%. Yep. As well as echinacea. Yep. There's a lot. As I said, there's <laughs> quite a few. It kind of depends what's going on. But it's always good to have those on hand. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So number 12, uh, we wrote journaling. Yes. Here's the journal. Now, why would you think that's important? Uh, Because it's been said, if you do not write it down, you have a very small chance of things happening. Yeah, and actually, I think there was a study done, and I apologize, I don't have the numbers, but I think it was somewhere upwards of, uh, if you write it down, the likelihood of what you write down has a 50% higher chance of occurring. Yeah. I don't remember the statistics, but I know it is, there's very few people that do this regularly. Yeah. And that, but the percentage that does do this are much higher achievers. Yeah. Like it's a tool. Yeah. I should have looked at that until I forgot about it. I know yeah. I've read the study before. I've you could probably before, just so. like duck, duck, go like journaling and goal setting. Yeah. I'm sure you could pull it up. Um, the other thing too, is it's good to go back sometimes. Yes you don't realize the progress that you're making. Yep. And so if you're journaling and documenting things as you go along, sometimes you forget where you've started yep. and that, you need a reminder. And that's why I wrote that down was, um, kind of goes back to number 15, writing it down mm-hmm. um, so that you can see progress you've made. Mm-hmm. You know, this is my journal. Um, let's see when this goes back to. I don't know. So this goes back to April for me. So. You know, oh, you know, almost a year old, but mm-hmm. give or take a few. So yeah, so it's great for those of you just joining us. I see a couple people popping on. We're going through our top tips. We've got fifteen tips. We're rolling up on number eleven next, yep. and trying to give you guys things that we do every day. Things that will help you again moving forward with your health and going through the holidays. So. Uh, I had to ask, what do you journal goals? Um, so I don't really journal goals. Uh, I journal priorities. 
uh, which if you're not familiar with those, um, you can check out any wellness way video by Dr. Patrick Flynn. And I'm sure we've probably done a few on our priorities. Yeah. Um, so we do priorities and then I like it for health purposes because, um, like Jacqueline said, I can go back, you know, uh, to two years ago and see where I was at health wise. So, um, when I journal, I like to kind of just write down how I'm feeling that morning, you know, even if it's tired or groggy or, uh, you know, body aches, things like that, I write that down. And then, um, for me, I write down like my workouts and, mm -hmm. uh, gratitude's a good one. I'm not as good at that doing that every day, but it is really good for me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely about the process and seeing how far you come because it's really easy, especially with our patients, you know, um, you know, they can, you know, start feeling good and then they kind of forget that they, forget they used to how feel bad like crap. they felt yeah. or where they started or how bad it was. So it's kind of why we do progress reports, you yeah. know, because we can go back to a, a progress report, you know, six months ago and they're like, well, yeah, I'm not dealing with that stuff anymore. So yeah. um, for me, it's just, it's just kind of journaling my growth and documenting my growth. I don't know mm -hmm. if you have anything to add for that. I, for me too, some of the things that I utilize it for is like organizing my day. Like if yep. I have tasks that need to get done, like ordering those out yep. um, and making like a short checklist. Um, you know, Andy Frisella talks about his power list, kind of the same idea, like stuff that, you know, is going to move you forward. Yep. And that, you know, when those things are accomplished that day, it's a win which also feels good. So, and kind of on the whole mindset stuff. So my business coach, he talks about building a map. So building a map for every piece of the day on what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, how you're going to accomplish it. Uh, because what, what he talks about, what we've really embraced is that chaos is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> your kid's going to get sick or you're, you're going to have a flat tire or, yeah. you know, God forbid something worse is going to happen. So it's about, following the plan, following the map and understanding how you're going to get to your destination. So, you know, in today's technology, you know, we have these things, phones, right? Mm -hmm. So we can put in an address and it'll, it'll tell us where to go, turn right, turn left. Now think about, you know, for us that are older, that didn't have these smartphones, yeah. how did you know how to get to a certain place? I remember, you know, back in the day typing in the address on like MapQuest, and mm -hmm. having to print out the directions to get mm -hmm. to a place. Even before that, it's the big old map. Fold out map maps. You I know? was the navigator in San Francisco with my family. That was a little stressful. So so <laughs> with that, an old school map. Yeah. So that's a lot of writing that stuff down. So Yeah. Whatever it is, like maybe you're in a season where you want to work on your fitness. I don't go crazy. I would say like, make it concise. Maybe you're in a season where you need to work on your relationship with God or, yep. or your faith, um, or your, maybe your mindset and your self-talk, like, like whatever, don't go, go, don't make it this huge thing. I would right. say you want it to be pretty short so that you can get it done every day. Yeah. Well, and, and part of it is to, when it comes to goals, uh, and it's actually Dr. Patrick Flynn who taught me this. Um, you know, he, I think at one time he said goals are just silly because, you know, name a goal that doesn't have to deal with losing weight, making more money. And I forget the third one, you know, so those are all goals like, Oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. Oh, I want to make more money. So, um, if you kind of take the goal mindset out and that's kind of part of the health stuff we're talking about you know, oh, do a seven day cleanse and you'll lose 10 pounds. That's the stuff that we're kind of trying, well, that we actually get away from and how we handle our, our lives. Like we didn't, we didn't just write these out to talk about them tonight. These are things that we practice daily. Yeah. Um, so it, it, these are, you know, it's taken a lot and there's obviously way more than 15 that we practice daily, but this is, you know, kind of like our routine, if you want to call it that. Um, cause you know, I'm not a big fan of routines either, just like goals, but, um, these are things that we do daily to help keep us on track, to help keep us, um, you know, moving forward. So, well, and the other thing behind goals is that you're continuing to grow. Yeah. Like when you hit a goal, a lot of people like don't know what to do. They're like, well, I right. did the triathlon. What do I do now? 
Right. You know, it's about continuing to better yourself in those areas that you want to get growth within. So yeah, it's really easy to write down. I want to make a million dollars, but if you don't have a map to get there, how, how much money is that per day in a year? Mm -hmm. How much money is that per hour in a year? So, um, yeah. Number 11. All right. Number 11. Let's hear it. Walks. Walking. Walking. I walking. walking. Yes. So um, we completed 75 hard last year. I'm currently doing phase two. Um, and that includes an outdoor workout of 45 minutes. And I just choose to walk around the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, I Walks listen, are awesome. Yeah. I listen to a podcast. I I put a weight vest on a lot yep, of times. Yep. So again, I think mine is eight pounds if I remember right. So mine's like not super heavy, but yeah. it's enough that especially when I go up the hills, like yep. I feel it. Um, and same thing, like it's it's a quiet time. I actually yeah. loved doing 75 hard this time last year, although it's cold, although not really yet here. Uh, I loved doing it with the Christmas lights at night. It yeah. made like falling back a little less crazy. Yeah. Um, and I wrote after dinner mm -hmm. for digestion. So can you talk about that? So that's great to do because you need to move after you eat. The Europeans are like king at this. So the majority of traditional European cultures, if you think about like Italy or France or Spain, after dinner, because they eat pretty late at night, uh, they walk the city streets, they uh, go maybe over to a neighbor's house and they walk there and maybe they spend time with them. They like go out um, for a stroll. Mm -hmm. And so that really helps the digestion. It helps uh, you not overeat as well because you get up and you get away from the food. Um, and so, so it's a great thing. What time frame? Because I think I heard like 10 minutes after you finish your meal is when you should go. Yep. Yeah. Basically like clean up, put stuff away and walk out the door, ideally. So that's, you know, going to really aid in getting all of your digestion happening um, and letting your body kind of not have so much that it's focused on. So especially if you like kind of enter into that fight or flight response that like, get up and go. That is not what you need to digest your food. So a walk can be really relaxing. So like having like Fox news on or something, that's not helpful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do not stress yourself out after you eat. That is not going to help you digest your food. Oh, oh I don't want to see it. <gasps> Which What's goes next? into number 10, apple cider vinegar. Woo! Yum. Yummy. Yum. Yum. So this is something you can do before each meal. Oh, I was just going to take a swig. Um, you can do it in, in water um, in the morning before you eat. There's a lot of ways that you can do it. <laughs> it's going to be tight. That was a good aftertaste. <laughs> uh, so what I like to do um, is I get up in the morning, and that's like one of the first things I do. Mm -hmm. Pour a pint glass of water and basically do a shot of apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. Just make it a habit. Yep. About a teaspoon worth. Um, that's what you're going for. Yeah. Again, it really helps activate your acidity of your stomach, which is what you want. It helps kind of all your metabolism like get up and get going, which yeah. is what you want it to do. Are there any health benefits? I mean, I think it's kind of across the board, right? Like yeah. The benefits of it. You will definitely want like the Bragg's. You want the apple cider vinegar with the mother. Yep. So, so that's really important because that means it's fermented naturally with all the goodies. So it's with the mother. It. And then this is raw, unfiltered. So Correct. Yeah, you want something like that. There's other brands out there, but I think Bragg's is the easiest and healthiest one to and, find. And if you do a lot, you can buy a big jug, but we just like this because it fits in our fridge because I like it cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, about a teaspoon before each meal, definitely first thing in the day. That's a really easy way to, again, just get your metabolism up and rolling and apple ciders are really good what's called digestive so it really helps you digest your food if that's an issue all right does anybody Nothing. else do that does anybody uh, take apple cider vinegar takers? every day any takers if you're not you should yes you <laughs> so, should all right i'm, about to, nine. I'm about to do this one next he's really this. excited 
Epsom salt baths. Yes. Why Epsom salt? Uh, I think like apple cider vinegar, it has a lot of benefits too. Mm -hmm. I know um, it, it's definitely needed when you're doing two workouts a day for 75 hard yes. to help soothe those aching muscles and kind of replenish with the magnesium and all that. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, I'm not sure what else. It's a, a gentle detoxifier. So again, it will pull out things like lactic acid, inflammation. Um, that's, you know, so if you have some sore joints or things that are swollen. That's why it's a really good uh, product to be utilizing and doing a nice soak in the bath. Yeah. Um, again, it's just really healthy. It's an easy thing. All you need is a bathtub or I'll, I'll have patients that if they don't want to get in the tub, but maybe they have swollen ankles, just fill up a small um, like little bucket or a small like tub of water if they don't want to like hop in the bathtub. Mm. Um, and yeah. just soak their their joint for about 20 minutes. And so you want to soak for, I heard, 30 minutes. This says 15 minutes minimum. So I kind of go straight down the middle. I'm like, at least 20. Okay. And then I say 30 would be better. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Do I get to do number eight? Yeah. I, oh, okay. <laughs> the infrared sauna. Mm -hmm. So these, we have a Sun Whiten in the office. Mm -hmm. That is like the creme de la creme, the top saunas. They get super hot. They have all kinds of programs. Um, they have very high quality materials. They don't use toxic woods. Um, so glues. talk about what infrared is because a lot of people may not understand what infrared does. Correct. So infrared <clears throat> is a wavelength. So think about the sun again and think about the UV light. So UV light, you cannot see from the sun. It's not visible to the human eye, but you feel it on your skin and you yeah. can get a sunburn. So similar to that, close to that wavelength is infrared light. So yeah. if you think back to the days of physics, this is again a non-visible spectrum, but it's super beneficial Similar to sunlight, though, it can actually penetrate down into the joints, two mm. to three inches, and into the body tissue, two to three inches. And what it activates is your little mitochondria. So your mitochondria are your powerhouses yep. in your cell, and it helps energize them. That wavelength helps them get things going. And mitochondria do a ton of functions throughout the body. So you want them healthy and functioning at top speed. So like our sauna, we have, I think it's seven different types of programs. We have mm -hmm. weight loss, we have detox, cardiovascular, kind of anti-aging, like anti -aging, relax, mm -hmm. stress, stress, uh, or would that be the relax one? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, I just think of stress. <laughs> trying to think what else. So, but each of those are different wavelengths, right? To, yeah. To gain the... So what it does is, because within the infrared wavelength, there's different amounts of, of the wavelengths that you can change. And the programs for each specific thing have different ones that they take you through uh, during that time frame that you're sitting in there. Cool. So it you, will feel warm. Yeah, but you're not just going in there and just sweating to high heaven. No, it's, you'll sweat, but it's not like a crazy sweat, typically. Uh, not like how you would in a dry sauna or a wet sauna. And the really cool thing about infrared is I would say in most areas, it's becoming much easier to find. There's even this new place that is a chain that, and a franchise that's opening up called Hotworks. That's and you this. work out in an infrared oh, sauna. And because you... <laughs> Because you work out in it, you don't have to work out as long. They're like 15 or 20 minute workouts and you burn a ton of calories. Mm. So it's like catching on because people realize like the benefits of it. Wow. It's, and it's and cool. there's actually studies, research studies based on infrared and all those. Mm -hmm. it's yes. Not, it's not it's a summer. great detoxifier. Again, it can help in lots of ways if you aren't feeling the best, yep. um, if you need to detox. Um, if it's infrared's great for your skin. So again, just your skin quality. Like if you feel like your skin isn't looking as good Does or that bring aging, collagen to the... it helps bring okay. collagen and turn cells over faster. 
So there's a lot of really great benefits. It's yeah. an easy hack. It takes 30 to 45 minutes to sit in there. And it's it's relatively inexpensive. Yeah, I do so, it three times a week. So Yeah, you can do it a lot. Yeah. All right. So that was number eight. Mm -hmm. Number seven. This is yours. This is mine? Yes. Make food easy. This is the note we made. This time of year, you guys, everybody's overwhelmed. Everybody's running around like crazy. I think I had this conversation two days ago. <clears throat> Don't make food harder than it needs to be. Uh, protein and some vegetables. Like that's literally the extent of what you need with some healthy fat. Yeah. So like for dinner Sunday night, it was a long day. Didn't really feel like cooking. I made some uh, marinated chicken thighs. Uh, just pan fried them and did yeah. roasted broccoli Steamed with broccoli. yeah with yeah. with ghee and like some pumpkin seeds um, and I think I used a little orange juice just yeah. to like give it a little citrus flavor. Hmm. That was our dinner yeah. and it took about twenty five minutes. So again, don't overcomplicate food uh, this time of year as it cools down. Use your crock pot. Yeah. Use an Instapot. Yep. Um, cook ahead. Like throw a huge roast in there and then use it a couple different ways. Or like once it's cooked, just freeze half of it when you're yeah. ready to pop it back out. We did that last night. We we roasted some uh, beef and in the crock pot, we just set it and left mm -hmm. it. Because mm -hmm. Mondays are typically crazy for us. They're so. a crazy day. So Mondays, we love the crock pot. Or... You know, if you have a, a Ninja Foodie, we've talked about that in the past, that like has an air fryer option. You know, I just tell patients like, I know it's kind of sounds boring, but like a protein and veggies is like what you're going for. You don't need a bunch of carbs. You need some healthy fats. What about snacks? Yes, snacks. Fuel yourselves throughout. Oops, this is the wrong way. <laughs> This is my favorite and our boys' favorite. This so, is my protein. The bone so. broth, ancient nutrition, chocolate. It's mm -hmm. not the fancy kinds. This is the basic, just classic bone broth protein powder. One scoop is 20 grams. Yep. I make shakes for our boys. Mm -hmm. I will put this into my coffee. You can have it hot. You can have it cold. Yep. It's awesome because it doesn't change the nature of the protein. Some of them you have to be a little careful if you heat them up. So real quick, talk about whey protein and yes. why you don't want that, why you want something like this. Yes. So whey protein is not good because it is created with casein, which is done from cow's milk. The reason why that is not good is because cow's milk is extremely inflammatory. And as you age, it is really, really difficult to digest. So even if you don't necessarily have a food allergy to it, it creates a lot of digestion problems, and by nature of that, it's very inflammatory. So you don't want to go and then concentrate it because yeah. basically the protein powder is a concentrated form. And, and you're basically only, I think you're only digesting or absorbing 18%, right? Yeah, it's very little because it's yeah. already hard to digest. So the reason why we love the bone broth protein powder is because it is gut-friendly, so that means it's very easy to digest. It's made from the bones. So ancient nutrition, ancient nutrition uses chickens. So theirs are done with chicken bones. Vital Proteins is another company out there that does theirs with beef bones. Um, that's fantastic because most of us do not get enough collagen. So collagen you need for your hair, for your skin, for your nails, for your bone health like heals like so if you have osteoporosis you do not need calcium you need bone broth and yeah. bones because that amount of collagen within there is what is going to help you have the components to keep those areas strong so and mine is actually vegan not that i'm vegan but uh this is actually one scoop is 50 grams of protein mm -hmm. Since I'm a bigger guy, I need more protein, mm -hmm. trying to build muscle, um, but it's still healthy. It's sweetened with stevia, mm -hmm. GMO-free, gluten-free, free of soy and corn. Yes. Um, it's just, it's, I believe they're fermented amino acids, mm -hmm. um, but it's equivalent to 50 grams of protein. So yeah. um, 
And Ancient Nutrition yeah. sweetens theirs with stevia and monk fruit. So again, and they put in, you know, true flavoring. Like there's real cacao for the chocolate flavor. So they're doing everything that, you know, is a high standard. Yeah. And it tastes really good. Yeah. So anybody that complains to me about that <laughs> protein powder, I've had, being a former athlete, a lot of protein powders yeah. in my life that are disgusting. Yeah. And that you have to, you've had some too that we've tried, that you have to like choke down. These two are awesome. They taste good. I remember when I started working out, my dad's like, here, take this protein in this way. Oh. And I had to drink it out of a straw. And I like, I would almost vomit every time I had it. You know, there's yeah. like, no, you need this to grow yeah. muscle. So, yeah. So th those are not chunky. They're not gross. They taste good. Again, if you're busy, just do a shake. Yep. But I tell patients, maybe you want to make two in the morning. That way you have one when you're like running around in the afternoon. You can sip on it in the car as you're driving around. You know, that's a great meal replacement option yep. as long as you make it with the right stuff if you're busy. Yeah. All right, cool. Number okay. six. Six and five are kind of stuff we've talked about frequently. Mm -hmm. So we'll cruise through those real quick. So number six is getting adjusted. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Getting tested is number six. Oh, I just gave you, ahead. there's six and five. And there five. You go. <laughs> so again, our big thing is we don't guess, we test. Like you heard, like with vitamin D. Well, if you want to make sure you're not overloading your system, test it. Yep. Um, your regular medical doctor could test it. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, but oftentimes I've had patients ask and they're like, no, we tested that already. We're not going to do it again. Yeah. So it's, again, things like that that you should be tracking that can be run, you know, at cost through Wellness Way. We don't upcharge for any of our labs. We're quality, quality labs. Yep. So you're getting the most information for the best price that is – you know, functional information that helps you with whatever your issues are. Yeah. And someone might ask like, why are getting tested and, and getting adjusted, not number one or two, but I think we'll get to that. We'll get there. They're very, very important. They're the foundation of what we do. Yes. Um, but yeah, we'll get there. So, okay. So we'll jump into number four, which again is very important. Yes. Knowing how to de-stress and decompress. Mm-hmm. What does this look like, especially for you during this time of year? <laughs> you may not have a lot of time, so you better know how to do this well. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> you can only go for a 10-minute walk. Uh, please go. It's better than nothing. Yeah. Um, maybe you need an adult coloring book. An adult coloring book? We have Harry Potter ones. Oh, yeah, we do. They're That's super right. cool. That's right. I have patients that love to color, that draw, that knit that woodwork i mean it's yeah. a lot of people's hobbies are extremely relaxing to them right. um or exercise again done the right way well, walking for me walking helps me be stressed because mm -hmm. i gotta think about stuff by myself i'm in my yep. head i gotta sort through it or i'm listening to a podcast mm -hmm. so walking for me is you know more, oh we had a bunch of people pop on hey guys hello, hello. so um walking um yeah. Meditating or breath work. I would say if you do not have a lot of time yeah. doing uh, Wim Hof style breathing will will help de-stress you in a very, very quick oh, man, fashion. We didn't, we didn't put taking cold showers on here. Ooh. See, that's um, we don't do that frequently. Though. I try not to do this too much, but I sometimes will. So, so again, just knowing how you de-stress and you've got to put it, like when you feel it start to come, you've got to deal with it then. Do not let stress rule the roost. So de-stressing is different than zoning out in front of Netflix for three hours, right? Correct. Okay. Like if you are not feeling your stress leave your body, it's going to eat you your health up, guys. Yep. Like this is one of our three T's, like as wellness way doctors, like the thought T. Yep. Like if you are not dealing with that, you are going to unravel your health quickly. So you've got to deal with it, especially this time of year. Yeah, for sure. So, number three, drinking water. Paul actually has a can of water this evening. It's from the Alps. It's from the Alps. It's called Liquid. It's pretty good, actually. Of yeah. Switzerland. 
Um, Which Alps? I don't, I don't know. Is there? It's a whole mountain range, yes. I guess so. Well, it's somewhere from there. <laughs> um, so water is a Austria. big... Oh, there, see, there you go. There you it's go. in more than one country. Yeah. Um, water is a huge deal. Not only drinking it, but the quality of right. what you are drinking. Um, in the office, we've talked about it before, we have yeah. spring water brought in from one of the local springs from El Dorado Canyon. In glass. In glass, not in plastic. Yep. And that's what we put into the office because in an office building, you're not going to get good quality water. You're on city tap water. Yep. And our at our house, we have a reverse osmosis system yep. that has a remineralizer. So what it does is it pulls out all those toxins and then it goes through the remineralizer to put the minerals, the good minerals back in without the toxins. And then it comes through the spigot. So yes. I, I typically am drinking that. Um, someone just told me about this. So I wanted to try it and mm -hmm. it's sometimes And then nice. when you travel, yes. buy glass bottled water. Yeah. That's a big thing guys, buy glass bottled water. Um, so again, a lot of you guys are about to travel. Do not buy the plastic bottled water. Again, all that stuff leaches through, even if it says it's BPA free, like there's just plastics are gross. So make sure you're picking up a good quality water. I think we've been on our water system enough that I don't know about you, but I can notice now oh, yeah, 100%. when I don't have good quality water. 100%. Yep. And I can actually taste the difference. So again, this is something that if your body is used to pure, healthy water, uh, you will definitely notice the difference. Well, and not only do we have a RO system, we have a whole house system that filters all the crap out too. So correct. Not, you know, we're on city water though too, yeah, and our water yeah. quality at our house is not good. Yeah, because you know, if you don't have that, you're actually really harming your health. Um, it's not really a part of drinking water, but since we're talking water, we might as well talk about it. So we have a whole house system that um, filters out all the chlorine, the arsenic, the fluoride. Not fluoride for the whole house. The only way to get that out is the reverse osmosis. Oh, really? Okay. So, yeah. anyway, it filters out the majority of that, and then yep. whatever we drink doesn't have that. But Correct. my point with the whole house is, you know, think of, like, the chlorine that's put into the, um, the city water. When you shower, you're standing under that. Your skin is absorbing that. If you put your kids in the bathtub, they're absorbing that. And then um, not only like if you're showering, that's getting aerosolized too. So you're Correct. also inhaling it. So not yeah. only is it going on your skin and your body's soaking all that crap up, you're also inhaling that when you take a shower. The grossest one is pharmaceuticals mm. that you're not taking, yeah, but that are in your water. I mean, that's, you're like low dosing yourself if you don't have some type of filtration system. Yeah, and, and with water, like Jacqueline said, Anytime we travel, literally after we get off the plane, we get the car, the first thing we usually do is we find the local health food store and we make a run. We go buy our snacks that are healthy, organic, follow our food allergies, and then we're also buying bottled, glass bottled water. Water, yeah. That, that we know, I think, is it Mountain Valley? Is that what it's called? We love Mountain Valley. You yeah. can't always find that one. That one's from Montana, I think, or Idaho. Um, and then, you know, we're just looking for like the place that we're traveling to, if they have local spring water, like in a glass bottle, that's usually going to be the nicest, yeah. you know, have some natural minerals in it, the best tasting water. So we got some questions coming in. So yes. should we drink straight water or should we drink something in it? So what I would say, and I'm not a doctor, but I would say whatever's going to get you to drink the most water. Yes. Um, now, if you're going to put something of it in it, our boys they like stevia. They'll put. We'll just put a little bit of stevia. It makes it a little bit sweet, um, and that's how we get them to drink water. Um, and it's a little natural flavored. Yeah. So they love yeah. the blueberry one. Yeah. I don't know why they like they ask yeah, for blueberry disgusting. water. <laughs> sounds disgusting. For adults, I tell them to throw a little fruit in there. It'll, you know, if you think about the, the spa, when they have their, like, fancy water. Cucumbers. Cucumbers, lemons, lemons yeah. yeah, oranges, uh, strawberries. You can definitely throw all that in. 
don't go artificial. Don't go with those gross, nasty Mio things. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> artificial colorings, artificial sweeteners. Don't do any of that. Um, we have we have Numa, um, like not salt, but it's electrolyte electrolytes uh, mm -hmm. that you know they have lemon flavor, they have a mixed berry flavor. Mm -hmm. But you know what? If you don't have that, you can always throw some Celtic sea salt in there, which mm -hmm. I I actually do just to make sure. Um, you know, my body's getting that as well. Yep. Yeah. So again, you can kind of flavor it, but think really natural. Yeah. Don't go with any of those fancy things that typically don't have good stuff in it to begin with. Um, the goal is half your body weight in ounces per day. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a a chink in that chain. Sure. Because I just read a study that um, actually doesn't specify how much water you should drink yeah I, I don't think there's any study that actually says that but that's i always tell people that's a good amount to shoot for because most people fall short of that and you yeah. cannot front end load or back end load your day you've got to have your water bottle i sit mine on my desk every day and i make sure i just drink throughout the day yep. um, and that's usually a good idea because you'll see it like if you're at your house if that's where you're working Again, put it out somewhere where you're going to see it so you remember. I think the thing that I hear the most is people just forget. Yeah. And then by the time they think about it, they are super thirsty and they're already dehydrated. Yeah. All right. So Colette said, I'm lucky at work. They have a reverse Ooh, osmosis water dispenser. Nice. That's I also very nice. use a portable structure one. The only thing I'll say, Colette, is make sure that it is remineralized because yes. if you have an RO system and it's not remineralized, then you're, that water is severely depleted of the proper minerals that your body needs yes. in order for it to be You're missing the goodies. Yep. And you may actually, in that case, the way to fix that is to bring a bottle of, uh, I have it over here. Yeah, Let me go get it. it. So I'll show you the one that we have that we'll even do just to help us. Further. So, and it, you know, we know uh, there's several people, uh, several doctors, several patients that we know that they use the Berkey water filters. Uh, the Berkey's a standalone system yes, on my those countertop. Are, those are great. So this is trace mineral drops. So again, that's one way if your office does not have a remineralizer that you can put the good minerals back in uh, naturally and just drip them into your water. Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is amazing, Ida. So again, that's not something I would necessarily put into my water. So a lot of us uh, docs, like we'll we'll tell everybody to do it in a shake. That's kind of the easiest way to do it. Um, that way you're not like because chlorophyll is super green. Chlorophyll and chlorella, like both of those are like super green. So you probably don't want that like just straight up in your water. But those are those are great. Um, yes. yes, definitely. So this is, it's just called Trace Minerals. It's super easy to find at any health food store. You can definitely buy it online on Amazon. Um, and it's going to have the variety in the natural uh, amounts that you would find mm -hmm. like in like spring water. And you just have to add a few drops to your cups, depending on the size that you're having throughout the day. Um, and we'll, I'll even do this if I feel a little dehydrated. So it's kind of like a way to throw um, some electrolytes in. So all yeah. that is good. Water's a big deal. So yeah, drink it, mm -hmm. but look at the quality of what yeah. you're what you're putting into your body. Just like food. Correct. Like really, really look at it. Uh, the Berkey's are awesome but they're on top of the counter. Yeah. So that's like the one downside to them, but they filter out everything. They're great, great quality. Yeah. yeah. Number, Number two. two. We're getting close. Yes. Number two, be intentional. So, oh, mint flavored. Mm. Okay, keep hey, mint. sorry, it was, it was squirrel moment for me. That's cool, Ida. Yeah, I mean, if you can get it, it just makes your water really green. But yeah. if you like the taste, go for it. Nothing bad about that. So being intentional. This is number two because I think this goes back to the foundation. This is something that you need to look at on a daily basis to move the ball forward. Yeah. So 
you know, if you are, for example, trying to work on um, meal prepping, like, how are you going to do that then? Like, let's be intentional about this. Um, well, it's really make a schedule, like think about, look at ways to do it, like find the way that works best for you. Educate yourself, you know, unless you have, I look at you it have a different, different, it's like being intentional is like, why are you doing something? Like why, that too. That's important. Like, why are you, why are you trying to drink a gallon of water a day? Mm -hmm. Why are you getting your food allergies tested? Like what, it, like, what are you trying to achieve? So. Uh, whatever that might be, you're you're actively focusing on being intentional daily on that task, and that <clears throat> even though it's number two, it kind of goes all the way through the list of yes, it falls into place. So um, you know, it, and, and another thing too for me is like try not to compare yourself to other people because everybody's everybody's journey is different, their healing journey is different, and. Um, being intentional in the fact of, you know, what it is you're trying to achieve mm -hmm. and, and why you do the things you do. That's why, like, this helps me be intentional mm -hmm. because if I know that I'm, you know, 10 times better than I was two years ago when I look at that journal, that shows my progress and it shows how I was intentionally on a daily basis. Yeah. Now, I always don't feel good about my healing journey. That's why you brought it up. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's super important. Like if you don't have a super strong why, you're not going to change what you're doing. Yeah. And then I think the other piece is, again, to help you be intentional, like educate yourself. Look at Pinterest. Pinterest is awesome. Done the right way. Like, like Netflix. Don't go get lost on there for five hours. Mm -hmm. But if food is a really big struggle, Get some ideas. Don't reinvent the wheel. Look at what other people are doing and try to help yourself then create like some ease in what you're doing. Now you're kind of getting into number one. So why don't we just drop Sorry. it? Number one. Anybody guess what it is? Go ahead. Drop a comment. What do you guys think yes. number one is? What do you think? Our top tip. Because in that way, one and two do go back and forth a yeah. little Nothing. Nobody wants to guess. Mm, no brave souls. Okay. Go ahead. Planning. Be prepared. Be prepared. Yep. This is. Some 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 people were like, "What?" They're like, like "That's oh, number one." That's it. That's, that's what, what I, we waited an hour for. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. No. I am super guilty of this. I hate to plan. I hate to prepare, yep. but when I do it, life is so much better. Like Paul was talking about earlier, that chaos, that like ball of craziness, like the Tasmanian devil, that is me when I do not plan, mm -hmm. and it's not pretty. Well, it none of this can happen without being prepared and planning for it, in my opinion. Yes. Like... If you don't plan on when you're going to go for your walk to de-stress, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen. Yeah. You're going to let life get in the way. Then Correct. Your, your health's going to suffer. Your spouse, your kids, all that's going to suffer. Correct. And like I was saying, again, it's like if you know food is it's, is a struggle, like, okay, well, prepare. Yeah. How, how can you make food easier? Um, or like water. Maybe right. you don't even know what your work has Maybe they do have a really yep. cool filtration device. Well, no, that's perfect. So, so like, go and ask. So like Colette said, I need to bring my minerals. See, mm -hmm. that's preparation. Yeah, now she's prepared yep. to make that health choice actually work better for yep. her. Um, the <coughs> other piece of this is this goes for planning lots of ways. Yep. So we have sat down. We're still working on it and looked at all of 2022. Yep. We're still kind of fine tuning some areas, but you should have a family plan, all your priorities. You should have an individual plan, yeah. a couple plan, a family with kids plan. Right. Uh, you know, if you have a business, a business plan, like all of these areas need guidance. If your health, you know, if you need to work on some different things, you need to get tested next year. I already have one patient. She goes, 
I've had my daughters tested. 2022 is my year. You should put her daughters before herself. She's a wonderful mom. But she's already planned on 2022 coming in, testing, and doing everything because she needs to prioritize herself, which I think is awesome. Awesome. Yes. We don't have a cat. That's our dog. dog. (laughs) uh, Like Colette said, yep, not being prepared can be exhausting (laughs) and costly. So cost isn't just monetary. Cost is also your health. And, you know, we get it. Some people... Some people think what we do is expensive, um, but it really isn't, you know, based on the care that we provide. Uh, but they may need to plan for their tests, you know, like after they go through care, I'm going to get tested twice a year with my food allergies. That mm-hmm. might be something you have to plan that 500 bucks for. Mm-hmm. That's a monetary cost. But a- another cost is, yeah, you know, Colette could be thinking she's she's doing the right thing, she's drinking her water, but if she didn't know that, there wasn't, you know, the minerals in mm-hmm. that RO system, she might not be reaping the benefits of all of that. And yeah. so that is costly. Yeah. You know? So it's, it, it, all of these, no matter, even if there's a tip that we didn't mention, being prepared is going to hands down, get you to the right place. It benefits every, every aspect yeah. of your life. And on the costly note, I always remind patients, how much is an ER bill yeah. for being in the ER for five to six hours? Yeah. That's not a very long time. So they ran a few tests in that amount of time. You come home with a very large bill. Right. And I don't care how good your insurance is. It's going to cost you a pretty penny. Yeah. Um, and what we do does not even come close to that kind of cost. So... What do we do as a family to be prepared and to plan? So we already talked about having supplements on hand for, you know, if someone's not feeling well, but typically Sunday is our planning day. Mm -hmm. So Sundays is when, you know, we're meal prepping, we're getting all the grocery shopping done. Uh, We're outlining the meals that we're going to have for the week uh, with anything else that's coming up. Uh, That's the time that we're building. Like we talked about, we're building our map for the week. Mm-hmm. So we're not scrambling at 5.30 at night going, shit, we don't have dinner. Yeah, what are we going to eat today? What are we going to do? <laughs> because what do most people do, guys? Mm-hmm. They go to a fast food chain. They, yeah. you know, they, they're, not, they're, not, they're not prepared. So then they go and eat crap. And it's just this yeah. vicious cycle that they go through all the time because nobody's either, either taught them how to do this or even sat them down and had this conversation. And... You know, like for us, like sometimes we make our families mad because we really are protective about Sundays and doing this. Like, we need the time. We have to do it. Because otherwise, like Colette said, like we're just exhausted because then we didn't do a good job preparing ourselves and our kids for the week. Right. And it's it's all about like, you know, we look at it as, you know, we do it for ourselves. You know, what is she going to do for working out? What am I going to do for working out? What is special going on that week? Do we have a birthday party? You know, do we have other stuff going on? Yeah. And, and if we can't show up for our patients in the best form, then we're doing them a disservice as well. So um, again, that's why we put being prepared and planning is number one, because I think if you don't have that, then you're just running around. Maybe you're doing things right. Sometimes but you're not going to be doing it consistently. No. And that's, that's the part too. Like it, the key with the, the planning and the being intentional is that yep. you do that stuff consistently yep. because it makes achieving where you're headed and growing and getting to, <clears throat> you know, those places that you're trying to do things very yep. difficult. And then I, it does feel like you're chasing your tail. I think I'd asked about, you know, goals and what do you journal? That's where priorities also play in too. So your priorities of how you're going to achieve your priorities every day, mm-hmm. which not all days are great. You know, we all have bad days. I have bad days. You have bad days. Um, but, you know, writing your priorities down is, is a part of that planning process. Yeah. So. And planning, whatever makes sense to you. Like I don't do this for my planning. 
I'm more like Paul, like where I, I write stuff out. Yeah. I need that. I'm a kinesthetic learner, like, which means I learn by, by doing. So if I don't do it that way, it just, it, it doesn't even stick in my brain. I actually need to write it as well. But I actually believe there's another study too about that. Not as far as writing goals, but actually physically writing stuff out mm -hmm. instead of, you know, doing this. A lot of people like, are that type of learning. So yeah. that's why, too, it's important to know your learning style. You know, I can listen to an audiobook and get nothing out of it. Yeah. I am not an auditory learner. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Like, I'll, I'll enjoy it, but I won't retain very much mm -hmm. versus actually physically reading it. Yeah. That's another thing we didn't put on this reading. So, yeah. See, we could have, we probably could have put 30 things on here, guys. So, well, yes. let's start to wrap up because we're over an hour now. So, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for um, popping on. We hope you loved all 15 tips. Yep, that's right. 100%, Colette. I love that. Yes. Well, what I love as well is an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Thomas Edison said that. No, way. you're so sorry. Wrong. Not Thomas Edison. See, I'm terrible with names. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. I'm like, I'll get it right. It's one of our founding fathers. I, I was just gonna ask. Well, Thomas Edison was a founding father. No, but he has a lot of science stuff. You, so you need to read our constitution. I'll read. I'll reread it. I'm really bad with that stuff. But again, it's like if you just take a little time to do all this. Doesn't have to be this tremendous effort yeah. in the long run to to change some stuff. Like it yeah. just takes a little and there's so, time. There's so many resources out there that you can, you know, and you don't have to go buy anything like other than a one dollar notebook from the dollar store. You know, that'd be the only thing you have to buy. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't have to go buy some program to do this. Um, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So Ooh, some health questions. Yeah. So, awesome. Um, I would say uh, regards to sinus, I know all too much about that. Um, yeah. I would say schedule a 15 minute consult with Dr. Jacqueline here and she can talk to you about how uh, she would use our approach for that. And then if you go to our wellness, uh, if you go to wellnesswaycentennial.com and you go to patient stories, you can actually watch my story, which I suffered from sinusitis for over 14 years. I had three sinus surgeries. I lost my sense of smell. Um, and, and you can learn more about my process and my journey going through that with my sinus issues. So, um, but yeah, definitely you could hop on the phone with Dr. Jacqueline and she could, um, you know, get further into that. But like you said, it does, you know, it, it all ties together. And that's kind of what we found in my process through the sinus stuff is, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's about getting tested and, you know, you know, when they start cutting things out medically, that's, that's when you can run into issues. I've been there. Um, so I definitely feel your pain, but yeah, you can schedule that through our website as well. So wellnesswaycentennial.com. Yep. So, all right, guys, well, thank you for joining awesome. us. And uh, we hope that we see you back here yes. next week. Next Tuesday. Have bye a great night.